We are just gonna do a shootout. A planar shootout. Shout out to John at Appos, Audio Advice, Patron Hawk, and Linsoul Audio for the demo slash loaner units. Today we're gonna compare the Aria, the Edition X, S, the Edition X, and the Ananda. Now these headphones have undergone a lot of changes over the years, so I wanna try to cover everything. Um, leave me a comment down below if I miss something. Actually don't. So first off, the, edition, the original Edition X was faux leather and they changed the padding to suede in later iterations. Um, the Aria, now is fully rotational. It has the ostrich headband and mimics the original Edition X, which I thought was interesting. So they've gone back and forth um, quite a bit, and I don't really know why. <laughs> it's high in, you know, they do all sorts of weird stuff. The Edition X, or the Aria, excuse me, has a darker color scheme than the original Edition X, and I will put images up for that. But they both contort and fold and not full, but they contort in pretty much all the same ways. Um, the ear cups themselves can actually rotate all the way around, so um, that's pretty interesting. That's fucking interesting, man. That's fucking interesting. The Ananda and uh, Edition XS cannot. In 2020, when the Deva came along, um, <clears throat> That new design carried over to the 400 SE and the Edition XS, which we just talked about. Uh, it has the, the substantial, for lack of a better term, adjustment blocks, uh, padding, and <laughs> it's dummy thick. Dummy thick. Uh, yeah, so the Ananda mimics the design of the Sundara, which is uh, interesting because neither of those cups can't move them I mean you can move them a little bit but they don't rotate at all so uh, you know some people found that kind of uh, disturbing that's not the right word <laughs> there's no rotation but the cups do fold up and down basically the window shade is actually consistent across all of the headphones so definitely something to keep in mind now we'll get into you know maybe perhaps why they did that and if it actually changes anything as far as materials go um, the original edition X, which came out in 2016, it was a metal with high grade plastic, pleather and velour, ear cup padding. Um, the edition X version two swapped velour for polyester, which became a mainstay in pretty much all um, headphones thereafter. The Ananda, very robust, all metal construction um, and pleather polyester for the ear cup padding. The Aria, metal with a high grade plastic uh, again, pleather, polyester for the ear cup padding. And the Edition XS, basically the same as the Aria. Now, Heifelman claims that the switch from velour to polyester increases sound transparency now. Is that actually true? Uh, maybe a little bit, but, you know, it could be placebo. But I do find that um, Heifelman headphones in general are already super clear and transparent anyway. So if there's a difference, it's probably pretty small. Yeah, let's talk about comfort. All these headphones are super duper comfy. The, the one issue that I've had over the years, and I've been demoing these for quite a long time, is that the padding will dig into the, the, the ridge behind here a little, but I don't find that to be a problem anymore. I can wear um, high feminine headphones for quite a long time, and I really don't have to adjust them at all. Now, they are a little bit bulky. You'll find that you kind of look like a dork. <laughs> So, I wouldn't go walking around outside with these unless you want to get throat punched um, by your local bully. Um, yeah, they're... <laughs> I mean, it looks like you're wearing a football helmet, let's be honest. <laughs> but, um, super comfortable, and one of the best things about them is um, the depth of the ear cups and the width of them. They envelop your ears. They actually mimic the shape of the ear somewhat. Um, and so your ear has plenty. Your ears have plenty of room inside. You're, you're, they're never going to be touching the driver or anything like that. Um, they sit far enough away, and that also contributes to the imaging, <coughs> sound stage, etc., which we'll talk about. But uh, all in all, almost perfect. You know, the headband pa padding on the Domi Thick Edition XS is thicker. 
Uh, the Aria and some of the older iterations just used that like thin, flimsy piece, which I it was fine. Like either or is okay with me. I mean, they're all of them are super comfortable. I've never really had any issues. So um, clamping force is just about perfect. You're never gonna feel like you need to take them off, and that's really important, especially like if you're mixing tracks and stuff. But even in terms of like general listening, I have still have some neck issues um but it's gotten better but you know sitting for a long time kind of uh, irritates that and then of course you have headphones on on top of that and sort of um it can be problematic all in all superb i'd give it a maybe a plus with comfort here so yeah what about the sound <sighs> the edition x now this is interesting because i remember liking it <laughs> But I thought even back then in 2017 that it was severely overpriced. I mean, for what you're getting, it does sound good. It's very smooth, very laid back, but it kind of lacked a bit of detail and the resolution wasn't quite where it needed to be for the price. Okay, so back then, you know, the X was going for 1200. I'm not talking about DMX either. What my dog's at? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Um, I didn't recommend it then, actually. I don't think I did. If I did, I'm a idiot, but no, if I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't recommend it, I don't think. You know, it lacked a little bit of zip in the treble, and it, and it kind of also lacked a certain energy, which I found to be an issue, especially given that it was over $1,000. I mean, I don't believe it was worth it then, certainly not now, but of course, Times have changed, but we'll get into that. So the Ananda versus the Edition XS, pretty easy comparison. The Ananda is crisper and livelier. <laughs> the Ananda is crisper and livelier than the XS, but it is more sibilant. I will, I will definitely um, concede that. Everybody, pretty much. Ev Everyone knows that about the Anand. It's a little bit hot in the treble, but not overly bright. It just has that touch of sizzle that can be a little bit of an issue, sort of, but not really. <laughs> the Ananda is also more efficient at 103 decibels and easier to drive than the XS, but I mean, to be honest, none of these headphones are that hard to drive, so I wouldn't really worry about it too much. The XS has a sensitivity rating of 92 decibels, but I, I found that even iFi's newest GoLink drove it perfectly fine plenty of headroom sounded great no issues so i wouldn't really worry about that too much i will say the xs is a little bit smoother more fluid versus the ananda which is a tad rough around the edges so the xs is similar to the edition x but i find that i don't know i just it's, it's a lot better to me it's better to me it is um i don't feel that it lacks resolution or detail or anything like that and of course it's priced where it should be. So Hyphenman makes a few bold claims. Bold claim number one is that the window shade grill greatly reduces sonic reflections. Uh, maybe, I mean, yeah, kind of. This kind of makes sense when you consider how clear the sound is overall in this lineup. Um, clear, open, crisp, a lot of air around the instruments. And um, I do think if, if, the, if they want to make that claim, I'd say fine, whatever. But um, to me, it kind of has to do with the size of the ear cups and the fact that they're kind of um, away from your ears, and uh, which contributes, in my opinion, to that. But I could be wrong. Bold claim number two, the more breathable polyester increases sound transparency. We touched on that. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, of course, a lot of this, to me, is a little bit of market speak. But the bass extension and thump is about the same on both. Maybe one to two decibels of discrepancy at most. And there's only a max of about 5 dB roll off below 100 hertz. So there's that as well. The resolution, the timbre, the micro detail and all these is very similar. So the hallmark qualities are all there. Attack, sustain and decay are really, really good. In fact, one of the main reasons I recommend the Ananda, now the XS, as a step up from mid-fi is that is because of the resolution, because of the timbre, because of the overall sense of air is a little bit better. Um, you know, things just sound clearer and more defined. 
I went back and listened to my HD600 and it still sounds good, but because I'm so used to that more open sound, um, I, I found the 600 to be a little bit muffled. <gasps> Blasphemer! A lot of people are gonna freaking dislike this because of that comment. I don't really care. If you're being objective about it, the HD600 can come across as a little bit veiled, a little bit dark, but I mean, it's still a great headphone. Let's just not get off track here. Focus! So the Aria versus the XS versus the Edition X. Uh, the Ananda is, of course, we talked about a little bit, a little brasher, more sibilant, while the Aria stays more in line. I found this to be the case over uh, many hours, many hours of listening. In that sense, the Aria kind of <clears throat> leans more towards how an XS sounds, but I think an XS is definitely a little more smooth, more laid back. So <clears throat> if I had to rank them in order of like bright versus darker, it would be Ananda is definitely more on the bright side. Um, then the Aria is kind of like a happy medium and then the XS is a tad smoother. I still don't really find a loss of detail or anything like that, just to be clear. Yes, the XS is the smoothest out of the three and overall least sibilant. Now I don't, it's not to say the Aria is sibilant, but it's a little bit more so, I guess. Let's talk a little bit about the mid-range. So there's still a dip after one kilohertz, but it isn't as problematic as it is in a 400 SE, Sundar, etc. Now I've kind of thought this for a while. I don't feel like, I feel like because the Aria, Edition X, etc. are um, a little bit, more open, more spacious, etc. It kind of mitigates that one kilohertz issue and doesn't it doesn't feel like as much of a lull, as much of a dip, and which can render those other headphones, 400 SC, Sundar, etc., kind of dullish and at times, almost like as if they're lulling you to sleep. But um, I don't, I just don't find that issue to be present, not nearly as much anyway and the others, the more expensive products in the line. Again, it comes back up after three killers, so it's not really that, I don't know why they decided to do that, to be honest with you, but it's not a huge issue. It is kind of an issue in the, the lower price, the other, the other models, but not so much in the XS, etc. So, to recap, the Edition X has a somewhat dulled sound, not as refined or lush, and definitely overpriced in 2016, 2017. The Ananda, open, clean, crisp, but definitely the most sibilant and SE out of the bunch. The original asking price of $1,000 was pushing it, but 600 to 700 seemed about right for what you were getting. And I'll be honest, I did recommend it back when it was 1,000 because I thought at that time it was worth it. Now, is that would it be worth that much now? Probably not, but that's a lot. That has a lot to do with the market and stuff like that. Uh, inflation, etc. <clears throat> the Aria is slightly less brash and sibilant than the Ananda. <clears throat> Very much overpriced in 20, overpriced from 2021 till now, <clears throat> and 2023 and beyond at roughly 1600. I think it it's actually come down a bit. It needs to come down a lot more because it's not quite my tempo. Well, the Edition XS seems to find the perfect balance and the least sibilant, and it's also perfectly priced around $500. So this is what the original Edition X should have been priced at in 2017. So I think Hyphamen finally, you know, started to understand. It's just, it's not worth over $1,000. It sounds good. Edition XS sounded good. But it wasn't worth 1200 bucks, I'm sorry. 500, chef's kiss. Um, for an actual really good step up from all the headphones in mid-fi, uh, definitely great. I mean, you think about the fact that the HD600 retails on Sennheiser's website, of course, at around 500. It makes complete sense why they would price an actual step up from that at 500 because it's, I don't want to say it's like a steal. It's a deal in this factory! <laughs> I'm perfectly priced at 500. Now as far as amping is concerned, like we mentioned earlier, they're not that hard to drive. Um, 
The addition X is 25, was 25 ohm, 103 decibels. <clears throat> can, can work out of a mobile phone. Inanda, 27 ohm, 103 decibels, same thing. Aria, 32 ohm, 94 decibels. A little bit harder to drive, but not, don't go crazy. The XS, 18 ohm, 92 decibels. So similar to an Aria we mentioned earlier, it's not very hard to drive, even out of a GoLink. So in the GoLink, if I remember correctly, it doesn't really have all that much power on paper, but um, yeah. So for this demo, and you know, I've used a ton of amps over the years. I can't even remember half of them. Um, but you know, the more recent ones include uh, XDSD Gryphon, K9 Pro, Zen MT604 combo, and a Universal Audio Volt 2. As far as in addition to Go Link. Uh, iFi Uno, there's just like so many DACs, you guys know how I feel about them. Um, what else we got here? K7, um, K5 Pro, JDS was kind enough to send me the new Atom Heavy, which is amazing. Yeah, so I've used a lot of different pairings here and they're, they're all fine. I mean, it's just, you don't have to freak out about it, okay? Out of the balance jack, you may get slightly cleaner presentation, somewhat, somewhat better resolution detail somewhat a little bit better timbre but it's very subtle and if anything using balanced is more convenient because it has more power so in a lot of these cases it may just be boiled down to the simple fact that it's just louder which is really funny when you think about it that i personally don't believe that there is that much difference between a balanced connection and an unbalanced one um but again maybe a little bit so just keep that in mind for as far as genre pairing everything sounds really good with these rock metal uh, pop indie uh, rap hip-hop jazz classical ambient folk and be the reason for that is because of what we talked about earlier it's very sound is very open has room to breathe um, it's pretty neutral across the board there's not much bass roll off if any I mean like I said maybe 5 dB at most um, but it's not like a, a drop off of a cliff. So um, I think Hyphaman bass comes very close to being as good as Odyssey bass. I like Odyssey bass probably the best, but Hyphaman is very close behind. So you're gonna be able to listen to pretty much everything here. Now, what's the final verdict? I never recommended an X. X gon' give it to you. <laughs> or an Aria because they're both overpriced. I still think the Aria is overpriced. I still don't think you should purchase one because I find that all the benefits of an Aria, which I go into in my articles, I'll link them below, all those benefits you can get with the XS for $500 without having to spend 700, what is it, 900 extra? Why would you spend that much extra money for maybe a little? A tiny boost in resolution, maybe? I've been listening to these back and forth for many months now, and I will concede that maybe, maybe, the Aria is slightly better in terms of resolution, maybe. But it's not worth 700 extra dollars, okay? That's my point. That's all I'm saying. And I'm just gonna kinda leave it at that. So that is my recommendation. Final answer is go with the XS. I still have a soft spot for the Ananda at my heart because I love the Ananda. I've always have loved it. I always will. But I just, if you guys know me, I, I recommend based on value most more often than not. So I definitely think save some money there too because the Ananda is, I don't know, a few hundred more. So yeah, final answer. Now, that's about it for today. Don't forget to not ask me about my grandchildren. Don't ask me about them, because I don't want to talk about them, all right? I...